For most of this class, we've been using the AWS Management Console via a web browser interface to interact with Elastic MapReduce and with S3. But there are also a number of command line tools that can be very useful. And so in this section, we're going to talk about these tools. So why would you want to use them? Well, if, if you know how to use the tools, they're going to be faster than the web browser interface. Uh, and if you're doing anything that you need to automate, for example, you've got a cron job that wants to, on a daily basis, fire up an EMR job, well, then you're going to be using the command line interface. There are also some things that you can only do with the command line uh, tools. For example, if I've got an EMR cluster that's running, Elastic MapReduce uh, cluster that's running, and let's say I want to add some servers to the task group to increase the speed of processing. Well, I have to do that using uh, a, the command line tool. And also, if you're doing things with Hive and with Pig, uh, then, or even just regular uh, Java custom jars, then interactive development requires that you launch a cluster in uh, essentially what's called a live mode, where there's no step. You launch the cluster, you SSH onto the cluster's master, and then from there, you can try running jobs and the cluster will stay alive and it'll help you debug problems with things like the parameters you're passing or other settings. And if you're doing Hive, then this is how you debug the Hive scripts. Now the downside is these tools are generally written in scripting languages, so Python or Ruby, which means you've got to have Python and Ruby installed on your machines. You do have to do extra work to configure them and we're going to run through configuration of a couple of the more common ones. And if you're a Windows user, then anything involving SSH uh, you know, has extra pain and suffering involved in it. Like if you're using PuTTY as your terminal window, then there's some work you need to do to take the private key file that you get from Amazon and install it properly. So in general, the web browser is faster and easier to get started with. Command line tools are more powerful and uh, give you extra functionality that you don't have otherwise. So the first tool we're going to talk about is the command line client, uh, Elastic MapReduce. And this is one that Amazon maintains. You can download it from the AWS website. It depends on you having Ruby 1.8 or later installed. Uh, so you can go ahead and uh, you know download it now if you'd like from the link that you can see on the screen here. And then once you've downloaded it, uh, there's a step where what you want to do is edit this credentials.json file. So this, what's in that file? Well, basically, it, it's a file that lives inside of the tools directory. And there is where you provide all the information it needs in order to be able to interact with Amazon. So you've got all the IDs that you previously created uh, when you, or previously got when you created your account. Uh, and then after you've set that up, typically what you want to do is add that tool to your path, so straight from the command line, you can be entering commands. So we're going to now switch over to the terminal window and give that a try. So what I've got here is uh, a terminal window opened to the directory that I get from downloading and expanding that Elastic MapReduce uh, client from the Amazon website. Now at this point right here, I've actually added uh, the Elastic MapReduce tool here to my path. So I could do things like Elastic MapReduce, and it'll give me a whole list of commands I can run with it. However, if I actually try and do something with this, like let's say I do um, a list command to show the currently running uh, job flows, it's going to complain because I haven't set up the credentials.json file. So if I want to edit this file, you can see here I've actually filled in a few of the things, but the key, the two key things right here are the access ID and the private key. And right here is where you're going to want to insert information about your account. So there is my access ID, or sometimes called the public key. And then I'm going to get my private key and insert that there. You can specify the name of the key pair file here. And this is the name that Amazon, that AWS knows about. And then you can give a path to that private key wherever it is on your local computer. You can also specify a path to where you want by default the logs of any jobs to be put. And you specify what region by default you want to run your jobs in. And once you've got this file set up and saved, then if you switch back over to the terminal window, now if I run that same list command, 
it's going to tell me that there's one job here and it's completed. There's a second tool that a lot of people use, which is the S3 command command line client. And this is written in Python and it's a command line tool for interacting with S3. So you can do things like list buckets and directories and files and upload things and download them, etc. So it provides much of the same functionality you get, again, from the AWS uh, management console, the web browser interface, except that it's a command line tool, which means it's scriptable. So for example, uh, I was processing some data that's in one of the public data sets, and when I ran the job, it failed because one of these 2,000 files I was processing had access permissions set such that I couldn't read it, and that caused my job to fail. The problem is the error message doesn't show me which of these files actually has the problem. So I could generate a list of those files using S3 command and then run the S3 command info on it to figure out which one of these files failed, and I could script that. So that's an example of where the command line tool comes in very handy. So S3 command, there's actually two different tools called the same thing, one a Python uh, client, one a Ruby client. The one that I typically use is the Python client, and you get it from SourceForge. Once you've downloaded it and expanded the resulting tarball, uh, then similar to the Elastic MapReduce client, you want to add that to your path. And then once it's on the path, it actually provides support for configuring it. You run this s3 command dash dash configure uh, command to uh, interact with it, where it'll prompt you for all the settings that you need to specify. So we're going to go give that a try now. So over here, I'm in the directory where I've got s3 command. And as I mentioned, if you run the s3 command minus sign is configure command, it's going to prompt me for the same general set of information that I had to enter for the Elastic uh, MapReduce client. So here, I'm going to once again have to put in my access key. And it's going to ask me for my secret key. Now, it supports um, HTTPS access to this. If you care, in general, I don't. So I skip all these things here, including a proxy server. And so now it's saying, great, we're ready to give this a try. So I say, yes, I want to test the settings. And it says, great, the settings worked, which means it was able to make a request to AWS using those credentials, and it succeeded. So now I will save those settings. And it saves it in your home directory in a .s3 CFG file. So now at this point, I can do things like um, s3 command, and let's list. And here, uh, note the syntax it uses. It's just s3 colon slash slash. Uh, and let's look in that bucket that I set up for running the Wikipedia lab. And if I list, you can see it tries to, again, give the illusion that there are directories here. These aren't actually directories. It just knows that I've got objects which have a path where there's a slash in it. So it's showing me that it looks like a directory. And I actually have um, additional files in here. Like, for example, there's this test.txt file at the bottom. So I could use the s3 command delete to get rid of this particular test file. And it'll tell me that it was deleted, or I could go ahead and do a put to copy um, you know, that same file back up there. And let's see, I wanted to put it into this bucket right here. And it'll you know, give me a counter showing me bytes transferred, and it'll copy the file up. So very handy for interacting with the uh, S3 file system, especially if you need to script anything.